In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the confidence intervals for the population mean. Now, in an earlier lesson, we were talking about unbiased estimates. We learned that the value cap mu, which is obtained from a sample, is the unbiased estimate for the population mean mu. However, we cannot really say that the unbiased estimate for the population mean is exactly equal to the population mean, as it is impossible to find the exact value of a population parameter when taking a sample. So instead, we can form a confidence interval for the population mean mu. Now, a confidence interval for the population mean is a range of values defined so that there is a specific probability that the true value of the population mean lies within that range. For example, a 95% confidence interval is an interval such that there is a 0.95 probability that the interval contains the population mean. So we can write the interval as a, B, such that the probability that the population mean mu lies between A and B is equal to 0 0.95. Now, I'd want you to consider a population where the random variable X follows a normal distribution of mean mu and variance sigma squared. Or x can follow any other distribution and here we are assuming a large sample size n. So we can say if the population is normal that the sample mean will also have a normal distribution of mean mu and variance sigma squared over n. And by the central limit theorem even if the population is not normal the sample mean will also approximately follow a normal distribution of mean mu and variance sigma squared over n. Now standardizing this, we know that z will be equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over root n, where z follows a normal distribution of mean 0 and variance 1. Now a 95% confidence interval can be illustrated by this graph. So the shaded area takes 95% of the area under the graph. So to make up 100%, there should be 2.5% on each tail and also considering symmetry here. Now, how can we find the values of A and B for a 95% confidence interval? Now, we know that phi of B is the area to the left of B and the area to the left of B constitutes 95% plus 2.5% of the area under the graph which is 97.5% so we can say that phi B is equal to 0 0.975 and we can find B by saying arc phi of 0 0.975 if we go to the tables we'll discover that this gives us 1.96. We can also scroll down to the bottom of our normal graphs where we can easily get critical values for the normal distribution. So for 0 0.975, it corresponds to a Z value of 1.960. So that's a much easier way of getting that Z value here. So we have 1.96 for the value of B. So here it is. So if B is 1.96, due to symmetry, it means A should be minus 1.96. So we are saying here that the probability that Z lies between minus 1.96 and positive 1.96 is 0 0.95. Now since Z is equal to X bar minus mu over sigma over root N, we can write this as the probability that x bar minus mu over sigma over root n lies between minus 1.96 and 
1.96 and that's equal to 0.95. Now considering the inequality, we can split it into two where we'll be having minus 1.96 being less than x bar minus mu over sigma over root n. And x bar minus mu over sigma over root n is less than 1.96. And for the first one, I will multiply both sides by sigma over root n. So we'll be having minus 1.96 of sigma over root n is less than x bar minus mu. And then I can rearrange this, taking mu to the left side and minus 1.96 of sigma over root n to the right side. So that will be having mu is equal to x bar plus 1.96 of sigma over root n. Then for the other part, we first multiply both sides by sigma over root n so that we have x bar minus mu is less than 1.96 of sigma over root n. And then I'll take minus mu to the right and 1.96 of sigma over root n to the left so that we have x bar minus 1.96 over root n is less than mu. So combining these two, we will get x bar minus 1.96 of sigma over root n is less than mu, which is less than x bar plus 1.96 of sigma over root n. So the probability statement will come out like the probability that x bar minus 1.6 of sigma over root n is less than mu and it's also less than x bar plus 1.96 of sigma over root n and that's equal to 0 0.95. So here we are saying that the 95% confidence interval is x bar minus 1.96 of sigma over root n and x bar plus 1.96 of sigma over root n. So this is what we'll be having here for a 95% confidence interval. So in the next lesson, we're going to be looking at some worked examples on how we can find the confidence interval for a given situation.